explain where Israel stands, and it's a perfect opportunity uh, for Prime Minister Bennett to explain just that, to take a look around the Middle East and the countries that Israel is partnering with, the likes of the UAE, Bahrain, uh, Saudi Arabia to some extent, these countries that are within Israel's orbit, and look at how they are faring, even comparatively to other countries uh, during the pandemic. And you look at those who oppose Israel in the region, the likes of Lebanon, Syria, Yemen, see how they're faring at the moment. There's a stark difference that I think the prime minister is going to focus on and let the world know that Israel uh, has its arms outstretched for peace. Those who are willing to embrace it, well, they are key to the country's security and economic future. Those that don't, well, they threaten the region's uh, security and economic future. And I think there's a stark comparison there uh, that Prime Minister Bennett can make in decoupling, uh, as his senior aide mentioned, uh, the is uh, Israel from the Palestinian conflict itself and start to branch out and look at the broader region, Israel's centrality to the region, Israel's status as a hub in the region, and start to redefine, you know, how people look at Israel in terms of the Middle East and not just about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Talking of which, of course, we know that there also will be meetings with top officials from the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain just a year after the signing of the Abraham Accords at the White House. What kind of meat is likely to come out of those meetings? I think it's a good opportunity for a photo op, number one, because this will be the uh, first time that Bennett has really had the opportunity to uh, to meet with these officials since taking over as prime minister. But it's symbolic in that uh, this is a carryover from the previous administration of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. There was always this uh, unknown fear that the accords would fall apart with the new government coming into place. We've seen some bumps. We saw Sudan uh, announced today that there's been no forward movement uh, with normalization with Israel. There's been, you know, some talk of some strife with the UAE over a pipeline deal that may be nixed by the Israeli government or certain aspects of it. But for the large extent, these accords have carried forward. There's burgeoning trade with the UAE, good relations with Bahrain. There are more countries that are still talking about coming on board. It's a good opportunity for those central players, Israel, the UAE, and Bahrain, to note uh, that this uh, these accords uh, can carry forward through the test of time and through, you know, the, the changes in any particular governmental structure. And very briefly, Mike, of course, we also know that American Jewish leaders will also get their time with Naftali Bennett. What kind of messaging will he want to be giving, given the relations in recent months between the two communities in different countries? The American Jewish establishment is largely uh, to the left, democratic leaning, largely, not all, although not all, reform, conservative, not orthodox. It's a good opportunity for Bennett to re-engage with that segment who have felt alienated somewhat from Israel over the past uh, several years. Thank you so much. Senior U.S. correspondent Mike Wagenheim, live from New York.